Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. I'm your host, Definition, aka Def Vader, and it's time to go back to a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away with the release of the sixth episode of The Mandalorian. Throughout this video, we'll be breaking down everything that you need to know about the latest episode's overall plot, the Easter eggs, and our theories on what could be happening in the future. This episode kind of feels like a side quest, but it fills in a lot of the titular character's backstory rather than progressing the plot, so there's still a lot to unpack from it. There will be heavy spoilers here, so if you haven't had a chance to watch episode 6 yet and don't want to know what happens, then I highly suggest that you turn off now. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for breakdowns like this every day, and with that out the way, I just want to give a huge thank you for clicking this video. Now let's get into our breakdown of The Mandalorian Episode 6. Okay, so episode 6 titled The Prisoner, it pretty much centres around Mando doing a jailbreak with a group of mercenaries and bounty hunters. This episode has an awesome cast in it that's made up of actors like Bill Burr, Clancy Brown, Richard Iode, Mark Boone Jr and Natalie Tenner, who plays a Twi'lek known as Shion that has a history with Mando. It's heavily hinted that the two had a romantic relationship with one another, and that leaves the question, did he take the helmet off or did he wrap it up? Never mind. Maybe he's a Gungan under there, I really don't know. There's some flirty back and forth banter between the two, and yeah, it's good to know that Mando at least doesn't spend all of his time with babies. We kind of get the feeling that family came in the way between them on a big job, and this pays off with one of the big reveals in the episode. Now, if you've been keeping up to date with the breakdowns on the channel so far, then you'll know that we've theorised that Mando will build a network in order to take down the Empire members that are after him, and I'll give my theories on how this expands on that at the end of the video. We learn from the others in the episode that Mando has a dark past and may have even been involved in the mass murder of people, though this isn't said for definite and at the moment it's all just speculation. The group itself is led by Ran, played by Boone Jr, and it includes Mayfield, Berg who is a Deveronian, Zero, a droid, and the previously mentioned Xi'an. I just thought I'd mention them as I'll be referring to them throughout the video, so yeah, it is important to know their names. Similar to last week, Baby Yoda takes a back seat once more, which is a shame as I feel like the baby is really the main thrust of the season and wrapping up its storyline is pretty much everything that we're here for. Anyway, the episode opens with Mano going on a galactic cruiser in search of work as we know from the last episode that the guy is extremely short of money, money buys fuel, levers for Baby Yoda and so on, so yeah, he needs it. Since being exiled from the guild, he's had to reach out to more nefarious contacts and this opening is as atmospheric as always, making the introduction feel enthralling. Ran apparently wants Mando for the job because he wants to use the Razor's Crest, as with it being an ex-military craft from the days before the Empire, it's not wired up with the same surveillance that most cruisers have since the fall of the Republic. So yeah, it's a hunk of junk that looks like a Canto Byte slot machine, shout out to The Last Jedi, but it's perfect for the job. There is some ulterior motives behind the jailbreak as revealed later, and I'll discuss these as they happen in the recap. Quickly though, we learn this isn't your regular prison break, and we learn that the person that they want to bust out is actually located on a maximum security New Republic prisoner craft. From the episode with Cara Dune, we did learn that since the fall of the Empire, the New Republic ended up getting too heavily bogged down in politics, which caused her to take an early retirement, and this situation is exemplified here. The New Republic's lack of authority in the galaxy is pretty much what caused the First Order to rise, and we can see that they definitely aren't all they're cut out to be. Anyway, the ship is run completely by droids, which does make things easier, but it also shows that the New Republic didn't really have a grasp on how to properly run the galaxy in the wake of the Empire's destruction. I mean, yeah, don't use droids to do everything. We all saw what happened to the Trade Federation. This episode shows that droids, though built to be faster, more intelligent and better all round, are actually not all they're cracked up to be, and yeah, the New Republic's reliance on them was probably their downfall. We also get lip service paid to the fact that the Mandalorians are all but extinct, and whilst I don't think this is completely true, I do think that their numbers are very low. It does look like after the events of Episode 3 that the group were at least highly scattered after their battle on Navarro, and news of their death has travelled far. We also learn that Mayfield was an Imperial sharpshooter, which Mando quips at and says, that's not saying too much. Mayfield replies, I wasn't a stormtrooper wise ass, and this is kind of an in-joke in the Star Wars community about how stormtroopers are all terrible shots, and yeah, it's nice to see the show giving a little nod to fans with this line. He has two guns that look extremely like Jango Fett's dual blasters, 
And whilst all the Easter eggs are nice, it kind of sucks to have Baby Yoda not really in the plot that much. However, Baby Yoda is not out for too long, and he comes up quickly on the ship when, during a fight between Berg and Mando, they accidentally open a locker with the character in. None of the crew really know what species it is, which, yeah, we still don't know either, as George Lucas has never really divulged their name, and it cements just how rare the creature is, not only for the characters in the show, but also the audience as well. Is he a baby? Is he this year's must-have Christmas toy? You're damn right! Like everyone else though, they clearly gain a love for the little guy and even pick him up, though you probably want to put him back because, yeah, Baby Yoda has been dropped on its head way too many times lately, and this again happens in the episode. They arrive at the New Republic vessel, which has a doorway that is very similar to the one we see on the Falcon and Empire, and this cements that this is how airlocks function in the Star Wars universe. On the ship, which is very similar internally to the Blockade Runner from A New Hope, mainly due to its all-white interior, we do see that several prisoners are there, including an Adrenian. You might remember the Adrenian from the Solo Solo movie that was voiced by Jon Favreau, and yeah, it's nice to just see one of the other species members pop up here. The group go through the corridors, running into a mouse droid and come face to face with droid soldiers who are pretty useless when it comes to Mando. I love this action scene and yet seeing him take down the machines is an amazing moment that really hammers home just how skilled he is. Eventually they make their way to the control room where they run into a new Republic officer and this is a nice little easter egg as the character is played by Matt Lanter who actually voiced Anakin in the Clone Wars TV show. Mando doesn't want to kill him but after he threatens to sound the alarm on a tracking beacon they're left with very little choice. Shian takes him out but he still sends out the SOS device and this sets a time limit of 20 minutes for the job. The group run through the corridors, taking down droids and fighting their way to the prisoner who it's revealed is Quinn, Shian's brother who we learn is in jail because of Mando. This is the real reason that he was selected for the job, as they wanted to use his skill set to set free Xi'an's brother, steal his ship and then trap him in the jail. Nice plan and all, but yeah, you guys clearly weren't counting on how resourceful Mando is, and he escapes the cell, heads to the control room, and puts the whole craft in lockdown. It's an awesome moment in which the hunters become the hunted, and I got flashes of Rambo where he takes down the officers. Mando is like the predator, moving through the corridor using all of the weapons at his disposal, including the whistling birds, flamethrowers and more. One by one he takes them down before finally making his way to Quinn. Zero also tries to kill Baby Yoda, but I guess all of the audience channeled their energy into the little guy because he manages to evade the droid for quite a while. I love the juxtaposition of the scenes with the crew trying to outrun Mando, whilst on board the ship Baby Yoda tries to outrun Zero. It's really tense, especially because we know in the background that the New Republic forces are slowly coming for them all. Mando tries the door trick once more from the first episode on Berg, and this fails and he has to kind of double down on this, which eventually knocks the character out. There's no love lost with Xi'an either, and he brutally takes her out too, moving to Mayfield to sneak up on the character in a very Batman-esque moment. Finally, Mando reaches Quinn who begs for his life and there's a long wait here to find out what really happened. I love the tension here at this point as we do learn that Mando has a dark past of murder and he's kind of been pushed to the edge here. However, he does stick to the code, saves Baby Yoda from Zero and returns to Ran in order to get the money. I do kind of wish we got to see Baby Yoda defeat Zero but hey, I guess not. Ran follows his policies of no questions asked and he doesn't inquire too much about the missing crew. However, as soon as Mando leaves, Ran orders to have the Razor's Crest taken out, and we watch as what looks like a cis bomber arrive in the hangar. Unfortunately for him, Quinn discovers that Mando has placed the New Republic tracker on him, and X-Wings arrive to the hub to destroy it. I loved seeing the cavalry come in, and yet yeah, just hearing the inside of X-Wing cockpits is awesome. Little easter egg for you too, all of the pilots in the X-Wings are previous directors of the Mandalorian, so this is a nice little moment for them. The episode ends back on the prison vessel with the group all locked up, letting us know that Mando let them live. Now, I have been saying that Mando will be building a network, and I think this ending kind of solidifies that, as there's no real reason to leave the characters alive for them to not come back. Though we still don't know who the mysterious character at the end of last week's episode was, I do think that it was Moff Gideon and not Boba Fett, and as we know the Moth is going to be in this season, so with just two episodes left, I can see him being brought into it. I know the Boba Fett sound effects are the same and so on, but yeah, 
Star Wars always reuses sound effects. I mean, just look at the Wilhelm scream. And I'm doubling down on my theory that it's Moff Gideon. He has to show up at some point, and I really hope that next week he does, as we have to get back to the main story, as there's, there's only so long he can do side quests for. Though I did have fun with this entry, I think now is the time to return to the real meat of the story, and let's force pray that this carries on next week. Now obviously I'd love to hear your thoughts on The Mandalorian Episode 6, as well as what your theories for the future are. Make sure you leave them in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video then please give it a thumbs up, and make sure you check out our full breakdown of the series so far which will be linked at the end. We go over every episode breaking it down bit by bit, so it's definitely worth checking out if you want to know more. Also if you're interested in The Rise of Skywalker, we just dropped a full movie breakdown of the film, so if you want to know the plot ahead of time then make sure you head over to that. If you want to come chat to me after the video then make sure you follow me on Twitter at DefinitionYT or head over to my Discord server which will be linked in the description below. We drop videos on there early so if you want to see stuff before anyone else then that's the best place to be. It's free to join and we have an awesome community so hopefully I'll see you over there very soon. We're also giving away a free copy of the Marvel Phase 3 Part 2 box set on Blu-ray which contains Black Panther, Infinity War, Endgame, Captain Marvel and more. And all you have to do to be in with a chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and leave your thoughts on The Mandalorian in the comment section below. The winner is going to be chosen at random on the 15th of December and the set will be shipped out from then to ever get surprised. So best of luck to everyone who takes part. This is a channel for people who are never missing television, so if that's the kind of thing you like, you need to subscribe to Definition. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this, you've been the best and I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.